Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make an orange chiffon cake and this is what it looks like. As the name implies, this is an orange flavored cake with a light and spongy texture, yet it's moist and it has a really nice soft and tender crumb. It's really good on its own, but today we're going to cover it with a orange flavored glaze. So the um, first thing that you will need to do is to preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 165 degrees Celsius. And then you are going to need a 10 inch, which is 25 centimeter, two piece like this, tube pan. And tube just goes right in like that. And then we're not going to butter it. We're not going to grease it. We're just going to leave it uh, ungreased. And you don't want to use a non-stick pan because we want the batter as it bakes to cling to the sides of the pan for a couple of reasons. One, so that it's going to reach its full volume. And two, because we're going to turn the pan over to cool. And some people have said that they've used a non-stick pan and the cake just falls out, which we don't want. So just ungreased, not non-stick. Okay. So about a half hour to an hour before you make your batter, you want to separate your eggs. It's better to separate eggs while they're cold. And so what you're going to need is lots of eggs here in the chiffon cake. You're going to need seven large egg yolks, which is 120 grams of egg yolks and eight large egg whites, which is 240 grams. And then separate your eggs and then just like I've done here, cover with plastic wrap or something and, and then bring them to room temperature. Depending on your kitchen, that could be a half hour, an hour, you know, you know your kitchen better than I do. So that's what you need to do. And then you will need, it's an orange flavored cake. We're going to need orange, uh, sorry, orange juice and orange zest. You're going to need two tablespoons, 10 grams of orange zest, and you're going to need a half a cup, 120 milliliters, 120 grams of freshly squeezed orange juice. Now, what type of orange you use, that's totally up to you. And you will notice if you kind of one day maybe use a navel orange and another day in a different type, your cake's going to taste different. And that's great to try to experiment with that. Um, I'm using the navel orange. It's kind of available year round. And what you want to do first, make sure that you uh, wash your uh, oranges first. And you want to, which <laughs> you want to grate. Here's my grater. Uh, I'm using it like a microplane, or you could use a box grater for this. So what you want to do is just grate the orange part. Don't, don't get grate the white underneath because that's kind of bitter. So just do that. I found it took about uh, two oranges this size to give me uh, two tablespoons. And then once you've uh, got that, then you just side just cut your orange in half and then I just used you know a squeezer like this and then put a strainer over your measuring cup because you want to get rid of any of the pulp or seeds and let it drain so you need a half a cup 120 milliliters 120 grams of orange juice so that's that now for our batter if you have a stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment. You could use a hand mixer for this, or really, it's not a hard batter. You don't have to beat it a long time at the, this point. So you could do this by hand. The first thing you will need is two cups, which is 240 grams of cake flour. Now cake flour is a low gluten flour, and I like to use it in a chiffon cake because it gives the cake a really nice soft, and tender crumb. Usually, uh, at least in the States, it comes in a box. And if you cannot find it, what you can do is take two cups of like all-purpose flour, remove four tablespoons, and replace that with four tablespoons cornstarch, and you have cake flour. And next, you will need one cup, 200 grams of granulated white sugar, and 
two teaspoons, eight grams of baking powder. You know, a chiffon cake is kind of interesting because it, it's kind of a cross between like an angel food cake and a butter cake. So, you know, sponge cakes don't normally use like baking powder, but we are going to uh, use a good, nice lift to our cake and a half a teaspoon, uh, two grams of salt. And then I'm going to put my orange zest in there. Oh, really smell. <laughs> so now I'm just going to beat this mainly to mix everything together on low speed. Okay, that's easy enough. So now just kind of make a well in the center of your dry ingredients there. And we are going to pour in our half a cup, 120 milliliters grams of our orange juice. We're going to put in our seven large egg yolks, 120 grams. We are going to put one teaspoon, four grams of pure vanilla extract for a little flavoring. And then a half a cup, 120 milliliters, 120 grams of a flavorless oil. So that could be uh, corn, vegetable, canola, safflower, any of those. And what's great is oil will give this cake a really nice, you know, help with the soft and moist cake. But also what's great is you can uh, refrigerate this cake and because it's made with oil, it won't get like hard like when you do, a, say, a butter cake. So that's another thing you can just slice and have a piece right out of the fridge. So now I'm going to beat this together mainly just to mix everything together on like medium low speed for about a minute. Now if you're new to making cakes and you know then I recommend just set your timer for a minute and then you don't have to. Is that a minute? <laughs> so that's what that's what I do. So now we'll just mix all this together. Okay, so we're done that. Pretty simple. So now we have to, the last thing we have to do is to beat our egg whites. So what I'm going to do is transfer this to a nice wide bowl and I'm going to wash my mixing bowl and I will be right back and we will beat our egg whites. So now for our egg whites. I'm using the whisk attachment and whenever you beat egg whites make sure that your bowl is really clean. You don't want any like leftover um, residual grease on there and same as with your uh, whisk. You could use a hand mixer for this as well. So now you will need your eight large egg whites at room temperature, that's 240 grams. Put that in there. And I'm also going to add a half a teaspoon, two grams of cream of tartar. Cream of tartar stabilizes the egg whites and plus it kind of prevents over whipping. Um, you can find it in the spice section of your grocery store. If you cannot find it, you can leave it, just leave it out. Or you could use an equal amount of lemon juice. Does the same thing. So now I'm going to beat this just on medium low speed get, until it is like just soft peaks. Okay, so we're done. You can normally tell when it's, you've beaten your egg whites enough at this point because you'll start to see the tracks of your whisk in the uh, whites. So it's just kind of very soft. So now I'm going to increase the speed to medium high and I'm going to gradually add a half a cup, 100 grams of granulated white sugar. I'm going to add a little, beat that in and just keep doing that till I use all of my sugar. And until the whites are really, they really fluffed up and they're shiny and glossy and have stiff peaks.
Okay, they look good. So, whenever you're checking, just take your whisk, give it a good stir, and that's what you're looking for. It's a little droopy there. That's, that's the way you want it. Okay. And another test you want to do is you want to make sure that the sugar is completely dissolved into the meringue. So just take a little bit, rub it between your fingers. It should be nice and smooth. If it's a little grainy, then just beat it just a little more. So now we have our batter here and we're going to add the meringue. Now we don't want to add it all at once because this is heavy and this is light. So we want to add just a little of our meringue to lighten our batter. So we're going to do this in stages. So about that much. Not critical. And then we're just going to mix it in. Now we want to mix the two together. We don't want to over mix because we don't want to deflate the whites. So big strokes. And make sure that you get to the bottom of the bowl because you don't want when you pour the batter into the pan and there's all this just the batter and not the mix together. So I'm going to add a little more. About half of what's left. You know, I find two to three, or yeah, about two to three addition, or three to four additions of the meringue. That's about right. So just turn it up and over, up and over. You can go down the center, up and over. Like I said, get to that center of the bowl. Okay, and I think I'll add the rest here. Okay. So what we have is the, the meringue and then the baking powder. Both of those things are going to give our uh, cake a nice lift and give us that really nice light and spongy texture. It really is a nice cake. It's good on its own. It's good with some fruit in the summer. Whipped cream. <laughs> Always like the whipped cream. Almost there. Make sure it's center. Just big, you know, big strokes. <laughs> okay, that looks good. So now we have our two pan and pour that in. There we go. Now you take the back of a spoon just to kind of even it out. That looks good. You could also just, you know, gently kind of shake it. And then I like to take a, just a wooden skewer and then just kind of run it through some circles just to make sure there's no large um, air bubbles in there. And there we have it. So everyone's oven is a little different, as I always say. I'm going to say between 55 and 60 minutes. So what, what you're going to see is it's going to rise up. It's going to turn a beautiful golden brown. And if you touch it, it's kind of set and kind of springy to the touch. And then you need something long. Um, 
wooden skewer here, and then insert it, you know, halfway between the inner core and then the outside to make sure that it comes out clean. So I'm going to say, you know, 55 to 60 minutes. So our orange chiffon cake is done. Beautiful golden brown color, risen nice. I took my toothpick, inserted it in there, came out clean. So now, as soon as it comes out of the oven, you want a glass, turn it upside down, and then carefully put that center core on the top of your glass. Can I get that on there? Can I get there? <laughs> okay, and that we're going to leave it like that to cool completely. So I would say probably an hour and a half at least, till when you like feel the outside of the pan, it's uh, room temperature. Now, for those that maybe couldn't find a regular tube pan, they ended up using a non-stick pan, or maybe you accidentally used one, I'll tell you what you should do. Take your wire rack, put a piece of um, paper towel on there, and then just take your pan and turn it upside down on top of that. Because you don't want to suspend a tube pan that's non-stick, because people have commented to me, the cake just falls right out. And you don't want that, so just, Put it right on top, upside down on there, and let it cool completely. So that's what we're going to do, and then when we come back, we'll take it out of the pan. So now we're ready to take our chiffon cake out of the pan. It's been about an hour and a half, and when you feel the pan, it won't feel warm. Just be room temperature. And first thing you will need is a wire rack, and then you can either like spray it, or I'm just lightly buttering it, or you could use a flavorless oil as well because when we uh, put our cake on that, we don't want it to stick. And then, so, take a flat edge and just go around outside. Sure, and then also in the inner core here. Okay, now I'm just gonna push up on the bottom, and it should, if you take, see my fingers there, I'm pushing up on that inner plate, it should come out like so. And then, I'm just going to take again my flat edge and go in on the bottom, if you can see here, between the cake and the bottom plate. That's good. So now I'm going to invert it onto, it should come, there we go. So there is our chiffon cake. Now, this is really good just as it is. You could maybe dust it with some powdered sugar, really good with some fresh fruit, whipped cream. But today, I'm just going to let it dry out a little bit. And then we're going to put a uh, glaze over the top. So now for our orange glaze. In a bowl, I have two cups, which is 240 grams of confectioner sugar. You may know that as powdered or icing sugar. I did sift it because it tends to have lumps. And to that, I'm going to add one tablespoon, 13 grams of melted butter. I like to add a little butter. I find it just makes it a little, the texture a little richer in the flavor. And then I'm going to add just one teaspoon of lemon juice. I find a little bit of lemon juice kind of adds a little bit of tang. And then of course we need orange juice. I'm going to add maybe one, one and a half for now. And Stir that. 
it's easier to add more liquid than to take it away because then you'd have to add more sugar and go back and forth. So start with a small amount and then you can just see how it looks. So I'm going to add another tablespoon of orange juice. So that's like now two and a half tablespoons. And we just want a pourable glaze that we can pour over the top and it'll drip down the sides. It's still too thick. If you want a spreadable frosting, you could have that. So just And then I'm just going to, uh, at this point, add one tablespoon of freshly grated orange zest. That's five grams, or, you know, just from one large orange. I would, normally I don't even bother measuring for that. And I like that, the, uh, the zest, because it, you know, gives a little texture to our um, glaze. Hey, that's good. Do you see it kind of that? Now, when I pour the glaze, I have the cake on a uh, wire rack, and then I'm going to put it into a uh, baking sheet. So that way, sometimes when it drips down, it'll, it'll drip into the baking sheet instead of all over your counter. Now, just before I do that, some people, because of the way the crust is at the, the outside, it sticks to your pan. Sometimes you get like this. You get little pieces of uh, just the cake showing through. And some people don't like that outside crust. So if you let your cake sit a couple hours, then that uh, outside will kind of dry out. And then what you can do... I mean, I normally just go leave it like this, but some people don't like that. So just take your hand and if you see what I'm doing there, I'm just rubbing that. And it will take that outside crust or even just loose pieces off. Personally, I don't mind it. I kind of like the casual kind of rustic look of it. But if it really bothers you, you can spend the time and take it all off, but I'm not, because I like it. So just put that. And you might want to do that over on your baking sheet <laughs> instead of making a mess of your counter. Okay. Okay. Oh, just smell the orange. So now I'm just going to that. How's it on that side? Dripping down, I can see. Yeah, it looks good. Put some in the center. I like to have the whole top of the cake covered. And just kind of let it drip down. I think that looks pretty good. Pretty cool. <laughs> kind of dresses it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it right like that and I'm going to let finish dripping down the sides and let that glaze firm up and then when we come back we will cut a slice. So our orange glaze has dried so now I'm going to transfer my cake to my uh, pedestal here or whatever your your serving plate is for your cake and I'm using a large spatula and lift like so okay so there is our orange chiffon cake with our orange glaze like I said you don't have to glaze it this cake is absolutely delicious without but even better with <laughs> so now to cut the cake 
I use a serrated knife and just kind of cut through, kind of sawing motion. Usually take a paper towel, wipe my knife so I get a nice clean cut. I'll take a large slice today. Okay. Oh, doesn't that look gorgeous? Oh, I love chiffon cakes. And there's the inside. Okay, so let's try some. Now, it's very good, just like this. But sometimes, I like to serve it with some, you know, strawberries or some kind of berries or peaches, whipped cream or ice cream. But really, it doesn't need it. Oh, excellent. It has a really nice orange flavor. Like I said, depending on the type of orange you use, that's the flavor of your cake. The icing or the glaze just adds a little extra. Now, you can store this at room temperature three to four days. My preference is to store it in the refrigerator because it, you can store it for up to a week. So that's great. And because it's got the oil, it doesn't firm up. I just take it right out of the fridge, cut a slice and eat it. Or you could freeze this cake. It's really... It's a large cake, lots of people. You gotta try it. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.